glaciers are immense frozen rivers. They slide, fracture into crevasses, and create vast ice caves. Glacianaut explorer Serge Aviot and the glaciologist Luc Moreau are fired by the same passion for ice caves. Luke's holy grail is to observe them as deep as possible, and Serge's grail is to go ever deeper. Serge Aviat holds the world depth record for descent into the ice caves. He's accompanied by Luke Moreau, who's studying the meltwater that plunges into the entrails of glaciers. When I was 15, I'd been down around 40 shafts, and now I make it more or less 300 to 350. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's enormous. And since the glacier has lost 100 meters of volume, we keep making the ladders longer every year. For many years, Serge's zone of exploration has been the ice caves of Greenland. And he can only witness with sadness the spectacular retreat of the Sea of Ice. After a long walk, Serge and Luke have reached the Great Bédière, which sounds like a torrent in full flow. Here is the principal river of the Sea of Ice. It's what we call a glacial rill or a bédière. The big bédière concentrates all the surface meltwater. In summer, it can flow around 1,000 to 2,000 litres per second. Each summer, this great torrent digs out an immense ice cave, which is called a moulin. Here we're before the great moulin of the Sea of Ice. It can drop down as much as 100 meters. The ice is 250 meters thick, and it's one of the rare means of being able to see the inside of the glacier. Now we're going to wait two months until it freezes enough so that we can descend into the interior of the moulin in safety. Luc Moreau is a specialist in the study of glacier movement. This is the automatic camera system that takes pictures every day in the aim of studying the flow of the glacier, the movement of the glacier according to the seasons, and how it changes. The snow melts. There's water in the snow, which makes ice that is less cold, almost at zero degrees. And the glacier slides on its rocky bed downhill under its own weight. It's November, and the sun is falling quickly. It's clearly time for Luc Moreau to meet up with Serge, who's set up a camp to explore the great moulin of the Sea of Ice. Yeah. This is great, isn't it? We're going to hear flowing water. Well, in my opinion, I think it's a bit too warm yet. We'll see tomorrow, but... It needs to be a bit colder. Yeah. You were here in the Sea of Ice in 86. Yes, that's right. It was then that we went down to minus 110. I came back in 89. But that year we had lots of water, didn't we? We were blocked at about 50 meters down. And then I went on an expedition in Greenland. <coughs> Something else completely. <laughs> Hervé and Lionel are, as Serge says, his relief watch. You're going to make a little trip into the moulin, just to place the main ropes and the traverse lines. But watch out that you don't go too far, eh? <laughs> like that, they'll set up a first approach, you see. That's good. Like that, it will let us know what the surface is like and all that even what the flow rate is. In that way, tomorrow, we can launch the main attack. The water is still flowing in the Moulin. This November's unusual warmth could put the exploration at risk. 
So you can see there the moulin is active. You can hear it pretty well anyway. According to the weather forecast, the sun is going to hit the glacier. It's clear the flow will be a bit stronger than it is now. Even if it isn't very high at the moment, tomorrow is going to be very difficult. The first thing to do is to heat the water to have hot water for hot drinks because temperatures are falling rapidly and everyone needs to heat up a little and rehydrate themselves. Serge gets the water so he can scout out the moulin as well. He hasn't been down it for a long time. 25 years. Because, well, if you like, the thing I want to do is to go looking for deeper moulins. So that's one of the reasons I went on the expedition in Greenland. But this one here, I've been down it as far as 110 meters all the same. Right, we'll have to bring along the bottles, boys, because of all the places in the world, we have to find water on a glacier. So if you could bring along a bottle or two. OK, it's OK, Lionel. You've got a good, solid harness. You can go down safely. Let it down. I think I'm going down further. You see, I'm on these blocks here. I think that it's all right, but after that, once you're underneath, if it ends up in your face, it isn't very cool. I thought it was going to go lower. Oh, well, we'll roll up all the rope. Right, here we are, back from the moulin. Did you see the fall flowing? No, but you can hear it. You can hear it. How many of you went down? In fact, there are two holes, two moulins. The bedière flows into the active one, and we went down the one which is beside that. Serge, where does the term moulin come from? Well, it comes from Valo, who went down the sea of ice back in the day, sometime in the 1890s, and who heard the noise of the river falling in the moulins. And for him, it sounded just like the noise made by a flower moulin. And the term stuck. At that time, they went down on ladders. I don't know if they were rope ladders, but I do know that apparently they had hemp ropes. Heavy ropes that froze. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. At the time, 60 meters was already a big thing. And the reason to start with, for him, was he wanted to measure the thickness of the glacier. So the development of modern techniques which we now use, they're from the work of cavers and the techniques which were generalized at the time by the French school. And in fact, all the techniques of fixed rope reascent, that comes from the caving world and not from mountain climbing. So, since its exploration in 1886-1890, we've never gone below 100 meters. Once we got down to 90 meters, but generally it's around 30, 50 or 70 meters. It depends on the year. You have to realize as well, the glacier has lost a lot of volume because now at this same place at the time of Valo, the glacier must have been 400 meters thick and now it's 250 meters. It has lost almost half its volume. Yes. Besides the glacier of the Sea of Ice, does the Mont Blanc range have other large moulins? In fact, there are moulins on all the glaciers where there is melting, surface rivers, bedières, and crevasses. But on the Mont Blanc range, in fact, in general, this is the biggest one. Cold and ice have moved in. There's much less water in the bedière which runs alongside the camp. But the exploration of the Great Moulin has to wait until this mass of ice lasts the whole day. There the crack descends to the side. But on the other side, does it descend there too? If it's full, it'll hold. If it falls, we'll get it in the neck. Here on the descent route, which Hervé has tried, there's a big block which has cracked. 
We don't know how stable it is, so the idea is to shift the rope to avoid this area, which is a bit dangerous. I've got some caving friends. One year they went down the moulin and a blade of ice gave way and missed them by an inch. It gave them the fright of their life, and since then, they haven't been down any ice moulins. Yeah, it's better if we move from this zone a bit. Good idea. Come on, Sergio. It's never the same. It's magnificent. The sculpture is different. Well, it's a lot smaller than some, but in this one, the ice is beautiful. Each time, it's a nice experience. Is it free? It's okay. This ice is hard here. Go on, you can pull on it. You can see the same things as cavers do when they go down limestone caves. You find the same forms of erosion, meanders, potholes. It's really superb. It really has a fine shape. It's very beautiful. Ah, there are stalactites. A fair bit of snow has fallen. Can you go more to the right, Luke? When we're up top, you just see a black hole. But when you're down below, it changes so much each time you go down. There's always a new little find. What remains unexplored on our planet is beneath the surface, beneath the ice. This is really the bottom here. We're on debris of, 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 of big blocks, which are, yeah, of ice. And in fact, there's a little fall which is there, which is about 15 meters or so. And it's really scary because there are blocks across it. We estimate, we'd say, that we're about 80 meters down. We haven't reached the active bottom because you can hear the water clearly that it's still flowing underneath. Because of this dam of blocks and snow, it's impossible to go down any further without taking useless risks. Serge is a good loser, but hopes to do better in Greenland in a few months. <laughs>